it's Fabs and welcome back to a Fab Kitchen. Today we are doing our final episode testing and reviewing Mastering the Art of French Cooking before we actually get onto the actual overview of this cookbook. So today we will be testing and reviewing Boeuf à la Bourguignon or Boeuf Bourguignon and um, I think it's called it's Burgundy Beef or Beef Burgundy I literally have no idea how you say it in a British accent or whatever, however you say it in, <laughs> in English, but we are making that and you guys actually picked that. So thank you so much for interacting in my stories. And if you don't follow me on Instagram already, then definitely follow me at a fab kitchen. I am promoting one dotty duck in this series. So definitely check her out on Instagram and check out her Etsy store because she has so many wonderful earrings and I just love them so much. But anyway, let's get cooking. We're going to start off by simmering our bacon in two and a half pints of water. So we're actually supposed to be using chunky, streaky bacon with the rind on. And let me just tell you, I literally spent, I don't know, like this week I spent about two hours on the phone with so many butchers in our area. And one of them actually said, oh, we might actually, you know, um, sell chunky, streaky bacon with the rind on. And then when I called them, they're like, oh, sorry, we've, we've literally just chopped them all up. I'm like, are you serious? So I couldn't find it anywhere. So I literally just had to result to using just normal bacon lardens. And it's just, it's not something that you can find nowadays. Like maybe back in the 60s, but you can't find it in England, I'll say that. You might be able to find it in France, but who knows, I don't live there. But if you are from France and you know, if you can actually get this, was it chunky streaky bacon with the rind on, then definitely comment below because um, I might actually have to retry this recipe if I'm in France. But, um, so yeah, I'm using Bacon London. It doesn't actually specify whether you're supposed to be using smoked bacon or unsmoked bacon, but I feel like it would make sense to be using smoked bacon because you want a little bit of a, like a smoky flavour in the Boeuf Bourguignon mark. We'll find out. I'm going to be using this. Now that we've drained the bacon lardens, we're going to pat them dry. Be aware that you want them as dry as possible or they will spit you like crazy once we start frying them in the pan. Now we're going to pour some oil in the pan and chuck in our bacon lardens over moderate heat and we're just going to wait for those to brown slightly. Now I did warn earlier if they weren't patted dry enough they were going to spit and oh my goodness this hurts so much. So don't be like me, try and just stay with the pat in the drain. Remove the bacon with a slotted spoon and we're going to chuck in our beef into the pan. Make sure the beef is nice and dry. I've just used a kitchen towel once again. And we're just going to leave it cooking in the pan, turning it round just to make sure that each side has browned nice and evenly. Make sure to only pour a few pieces of meat in at a time to prevent overcrowding in the pan. Once all the beef has been browned and removed from the pan, chuck in your chopped carrot and your chopped onion and brown those as well. There wasn't enough fat left at the bottom of my pan so I did have to add some more oil and let me just say it was a little bit too much but that's okay. It did help to stop it from sticking and this is how my carrot and onion looked nice and browned. Now I did make a little bit of a mistake here but I'll address it later. So put your beef back into your pan as well as your bacon, season it with some salt and some pepper and then give it a little stir. Here we've got around 30 grams of flour and we're just going to add that to the beef, stirring it around to coat it evenly. I added mine in half at a time, but you can decide to add it all at once if you want. Now we're going to chuck that into an oven for four minutes. That's been for heating at around 230 degrees Celsius. Then we're going to take it out, give it a stir and put it back in the oven for another four minutes. And this is how it should look. Okay, so I did not realise basically the book was a little bit confusing but this was supposed to be in there as it was in the oven but that's okay I'm just gonna add it now shame and we're just gonna mix it all together it'll be fine now pour an entire bottle of a full-bodied young red wine into your pan followed by enough beef stock to just about cover the meat chuck in some tomato puree minced garlic thyme and a bay leaf roughly broken down mix it all together then bring it to a simmer on the cooker Place the lid on top, put your pan in the oven and we're going to turn it down to 160 degrees Celsius. It's going to stay in there for around 3-4 to four hours until your beef is nice and tender. In the meantime we're going to prepare our brown braised onions and our mushroom sautéed in butter. For this next stage we're supposed to use tiny little onions that are around an inch in diameter but I literally couldn't find them anywhere. So I'm just going to use normal 
white onions and I kind of worked it out that there are probably three I would say three tiny onions in one normal onion so I have gotten for six normal sized onions rather than 18 small onions and they are supposed to be kept whole but because they are larger I am going to cut them into quarters as well now that I'm looking at these onions I feel like I need less because I feel like half of this would be one of the tiny little onions. We'll see, I might have to recalculate. I am just gonna use this amount rather than using the six onions I originally planned. I think three onions is gonna work out perfectly. Now we're gonna get those onions cooking. So we're gonna first melt some butter in a pan with a little bit of oil. Once it starts bubbling, we are gonna chuck in our onions. We are going to saute them for about 10 minutes until they brown slightly. And then we're gonna add in our beef stock, season it with a little bit of salt and pepper, followed by our herb bouquet. I'm gonna show you how I made my herb bouquet. So I didn't actually have a cheesecloth like it mentions in a cookbook. So apparently you can use a cotton tea towel. So that's what I did. And I basically just cut out a square and um, I filled it with my herbs. So we're just gonna add the lid to our saucepan and we're gonna let that simmer on low for around 40 minutes. Whilst that's simmering away, let's prep our mushrooms. So mushrooms, yeah, they do grow on the ground, so they are gonna be quite muddy. So you really wanna try and clean them, but in this recipe, you do need the mushrooms to be as dry as possible. So I didn't really wanna wash them. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna get a tea towel that's a little bit damp and I'm just gonna wipe those mushrooms down. So get rid of all the mud, get rid of all the dirt. The mushroom that you're seeing right now is a quite old a mushroom. So the exterior of the mushroom is actually starting to peel away. But that's fine as well. There are multiple ways you can get rid of uh, the dirt, I guess. Some people actually choose to peel their mushrooms. So either way, it's perfectly fine. So just do this with all the mushrooms and you just wanna cut off the end of the mushroom and then we're just gonna chop it into quarters if it's a larger one. Um, but unfortunately I couldn't find any more normal sized mushrooms. So I did have to buy baby butter mushrooms, which taste the same. They're just a little bit younger and a little bit smaller. So I'm just gonna chop those in half rather than quarter them. So the mushrooms are literally the simplest part of this entire recipe. All you need to do is chuck in some butter, chuck in some oil, wait for it to heat up in that pan. Once it stops bubbling, chuck in your mushrooms, let them do their thing, wait for it to brown and what? They're done. Can you believe it? 40 minutes later and our onions are ready. So we're just gonna take out that herb bouquet and put the onions aside until we need them. Now that the meat is tender, we've taken it out of the oven and we're basically gonna sieve the meat from the sauce so that one, we can thicken that sauce up all good and proper and we can separate the meat from like the carrots and the onions that went in there in the first place. Okay, yo, this was not my proudest moment and it's not skillfully done at all, but let me just say, yo, a cast iron casserole pan is heavy. Oh my gosh, I don't even remember how much it weighed, like 15 kilos? Nah, I must be lying. I must be lying, I'm gonna have to check. Yo, it was heavy. I was like, oh my God, how on earth am I holding this right now? Like, it's one thing to be like carrying it normally or like in both hands, but when you have to pour it, it's like, whoa, the weight is thrown out of balance. Let me just tell you that. No, I legit just checked. <laughs> It's nowhere near 15 kilos, it's like four kilos. I don't know where I got 15 from. Once I washed out the casserole pan, I just popped all the meat back in, trying to avoid as much carrot and onion as possible. And now these jammy onions go in. And these lovely mushrooms. Now the only thing left to go on top is that sauce that has been simmering for some time. After what has felt like a million years this is kind of lightly coating it you can't really see it but it is it really is like coating it slightly and when i say slightly i mean proper proper slightly but i'm just so tired I'm, i just want it to be okay so i'm gonna pour it in now how luscious is that and so it just needs to simmer for about two to three minutes and then put some parsley on top and it's ready. Oh my gosh, this is finally done. Can you see like the bags under my eyes? I'm so fed up. Like 
This recipe has been the bane of my life. It has taken me eight hours. If this isn't worth it, there's going to be some havoc. Let me just try it, okay? I'm just going to turn around and get some and... So you're supposed to serve it with like, I think the usual thing is like boiled potatoes or steamed potatoes. So that's why I've got some baby potatoes. I'm just going to try it on its own and then I'm going to try it with a potato and then we'll see how it tastes. But you can't be bothered. Okay, so I have a bit of the beef, the bacon, the mushroom and the onion. So it's pretty hot, but I hope it tastes nice. Literally all I can smell is wine. And um, when I tried the like that sauce before, it literally was just, I felt like I chugged an entire bottle of wine. So I'm hoping it's not as strong now because that's going to really put me off. It's okay. It was not worth eight hours. Yo, I said I was going to try it with the potato. I can't even be bothered. Like literally, I, I, don't, I don't even think I've got any more energy to chew. Like, I was so hungry. I've been waiting for this meal for eight hours. And... Hello darkness, my old friend. Guys, you should have just voted for the cuckoo fan. It would not have taken this long. But anyway, let's get on to ratings. <laughs> Okay, so in terms of tastes, it's not awful, but it's not that great. So I'm gonna give it a four star. Like it is nice, but I think I'm just so fed up with it. I'm like, bun this dish. Buff bourguignon, who? Literally, I'm so vexed with this dish. So I'm gonna give it a four star because it's okay, but I think I'm just, my emotions are coming into the, the tastings. But now, in terms of ease of sauce, like, I told you I couldn't find a bacon, I couldn't find um, tiny little onions, and literally, you have to buy a cast iron pan for this recipe, and like, the average household, especially like people young, like my age, we're not going to have cast iron pans, so having to like, trek, and um, I don't have a cast, so I have to lugger lugger this, this like, cast iron pan, and it's just, but anyway, so for that reason, I'm going to give that a two star, because it was just... It was not worth the effort. And then difficulty, like eight hours, eight hours. Oh my gosh, I'm so vexed. Literally, you know, you know when a dish just takes so long, it's angry, but like, me now I want to eat it now. Yeah, um, that's me right now. And it took eight hours and not only that, like if you've got a recipe, give me everything in that one recipe. But I mean like this book is good because it was literally made to teach people how to cook. I think it was to teach America how to cook or something like that. And so it it gives you like little components. And so there are like certain recipes that are reused in loads of different recipes. So rather than repeating the same thing over and over again, um, they've just, they're like, oh, go to page 444. Go to page 473. Those were the actual pages I had to go to. I'm like... Nowadays, you know, it will go easy. So when you have an actual recipe, they give you everything. There's no like, see page, blah, 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 blah. You know what I mean? But for that reason, literally, I was so vexed with it. The eight hours and then I having to flip here, flip there. It's getting a one star for that. And that is the lowest I think I've given for difficulty because why? This was vexing. So overall, <laughs> I'm not sure if this is the lowest score I've ever given for it any dish but this is getting a 2.3 star and this was not the way to end this is not a way to end the series like what is it three out of four of the cookbooks that i reviewed have ended on a bad note the only one that hasn't was the one that we did last um last month which was the eat what you watch by binge with babish and if you haven't seen that already then click the link above but this was horrible no it wasn't horrible but it was a horrible experience, I'll tell you that. 2.3, that's awful. Julia Child, you should be ashamed of yourself. But, um, I mean, someone in Louis, lose it, you're, you're to blame as well. And you're proper French people and this is what you're giving me. Nah. Time for price and advice. This dish cost £23.87 overall, which works out to be £3.98 per seven as this dish serves six people. Now, if we would take into consideration the fact that I didn't have a casserole dish, and for those of you who don't actually have one as well, 
this is going to rack the price up to £58.87 overall, which is £9.81 per serving. And it's not an awful price to pay in a restaurant, but if you're making it at home, like, boy, that's not worth it. In terms of advice, I just used OXO cubes as my beef stock, but I would definitely recommend using a higher quality beef stock to further enhance your dish. I also feel like this could have done with a different kind of flavour as this all ended up merging into one. So perhaps before adding your dish to the oven, cut up a couple medium carrots into chunks and chuck those in. And finally, despite using the type of wine advised in the book, I still feel as though buying a higher end wine of the same type would have made this dish much richer. Once again with this book, quality is everything. So it doesn't really seem possible to make a recipe from this cookbook on a budget, unfortunately. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of my videos. And don't forget to check out one dotty duck on Instagram and Etsy. But for now, push. So we're actually supposed to be starting out with Don't you just hate the people in that area? But yeah. Yeah, definitely follow me on that. Don't forget, no, 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 no,